Hello, my name's Sarah Shaw from Museum Tales Limited and I'm a training consultant working with kids in museums. I've been working in the sector for over 15 years and today I'll be sharing some hints and tips for creating welcoming venues for families. In this video I'll be discussing my own experiences of creating family friendly venues for English heritage along with other best practice examples from the sector. So why are families important to museums? All of our visitors are important to us, but we know from a 2018 audience agency report that 35% of our visitors attend as families. Families visit to educate, entertain and socialise with their children. And we also know that if a child visits, they're three to four more times more likely to visit a museum as an adult. Families also play an important part in the financial stability of museums. At English Heritage, for example, we knew that families were our biggest spenders in terms of secondary spend. That's the money going into your cafes, your shops and your special event tickets. And this is a trend which is mirrored across the sector. So what are the barriers families face when visiting a museum? We know from extensive research that families unfortunately can face quite a lot of barriers when visiting a museum. This can range from social barriers, feeling it's not for them, economic barriers such as the price of entering, but also attitudinal barriers, being made to feel unwelcome or having concern around their child's behaviour. Physical access can also be a concern. Worries that you might not be able to fit your buggy around, will they be able to access the cafe, and will there be family facilities such as bottle warmers and child-friendly food options? Sadly, we also know that British heritage sites are not inclusive enough. 29% of parents of children with special needs have felt unwelcome in cultural venues, even to the point of being asked to leave. So there's also potential barriers for front of house staff engaging with families. In 2018, I conducted a survey with some staff and volunteers from English Heritage, and during this research, some key themes became apparent. Being family friendly wasn't in our front of house job or volunteer descriptions, so it wasn't an expected attribute to have. Our staff and volunteers had previously received no specific training on how to work with families, and there'd been no training on how to manage difficult situations with them. There was also a concern around balancing the needs of other visitors around families, such as if they were making too much noise. And in some cases, which was few, there was a feeling of this isn't why I'm here and there might be some outdated attitudes to families being on site. The three biggest problems that seemed to crop up were that families themselves felt they needed permission to play on site. They weren't sure what they could and couldn't do when they were there. Some staff and volunteers felt that it wasn't for them engaging with families and that also there might be a little bit of joined up thinking um, lacking between some of our departments in terms of planning for families being on site. So how did we make that change? Well, between 2016 and 18, I conducted extensive research into family engagement at cultural sites across the UK, looking at what worked and what didn't. I also talked to our front of house staff, families and volunteers to extend their experiences in more detail. I then invited members of staff from all departments to join the working group to create an English heritage wide approach to engaging families. And finally, I worked with kids in museums. It became really clear from our conversations that the biggest area to work on was the hello and the goodbye, getting the staff and volunteers to engage with children on a really basic level. This felt like a really achievable goal for staff and volunteers, particularly those who previously hadn't felt very comfortable engaging with children. It also set the tone from the very beginning that this was a venue for them and that they were welcome when they were on site. Beyond the hello and goodbye, it was also really important for front of house teams to be able to be feel confident and sympathetic when dealing with families in difficult situations. Staff, families and volunteers had noticed common situations which were causing them concern on site and we wanted to find an effective way to deal with this. This might include things like a family being noisy or making a mess in the cafe or perhaps touching sensitive objects. In the past, these incidents hadn't always been handled sensitively and it caused upset for some family visitors and our staff. So in terms of dealing with these common situations, as a team we worked together to come up with what was acceptable and proved responses. This gave the staff and volunteers greater confidence and ensured that we were dealing with issues of concern in an acceptable and friendly manner. I'd really recommend talking to your own staff and volunteers and families to identify any recurring issues and agree an acceptable way to deal with them, allowing your staff and volunteers to take ownership and feel heard. If you can, Reflect on this with your families and see if that's how they would like you to respond as an organisation. So an example for us at English Heritage had been that we were receiving occasionally complaints from staff and other visitors about families being noisy in our exhibition spaces. This was a really interesting scenario because it sparked a conversation around actually who do we want to be and that was an organisation that did welcome families to make noise. It was showing that they were interacting with the exhibition and that was something we wanted to encourage. 
So we agreed that we'd take on board the complaint, apologise to the individual, but then suggest a quieter area of the site for them to explore, or an alternative route to allow them to keep the distance from that family. We also acknowledged that there might be some additional needs within the family group, which is why we suggested alternative routes rather than asking the family to quieten down. When you start these conversations, you might come across a range of issues which need resolving. At English Heritage, I created a short family-friendly handbook which all staff and volunteers were then expected to read. It became a compulsory element of our induction training for staff and volunteers and meant we had a really clear message of who we were and how we wanted to deal with situations. It also allowed us an organisation to agree who we wanted to be, which was really, really important. You can find further information on creating a welcome family friendly environment in our second film and in our resources on the website. I really hope this video has been useful and that you go forward on your own journey to create an exciting and family friendly welcome on site.